I'm sitting next to a legend. I don't know about that. A legend, the voice of the Boston Celtics, uh, Mike Gorman, Hall of Famer, 42nd and final season here calling Boston Celtics games. Mike, entering this season, I know we're at the early part of it. What's it like for you and how do you approach it knowing that th this will be your last go around? Um, well, it's actually a lot of fun because I live next door, so I come here about five minutes before we tip. I'm over here early because of you tonight. Um, but uh, I, I, the thing I'm going to miss most, I guess, is what, what you're getting at is, is the people. It's getting to know someone like yourself. It's getting to know our, our producer up there, Frank, and everybody else around the league. It's not so much the game. People say, what do you remember about the games? And the games all run together, as you know, after a while. But what doesn't run together are the personalities that you meet. And so the fact that I would go to but 29 different cities, 30 different cities every year uh, to do a game, and, and you have somebody you're friendly with in every city. Um, I won't see those people anymore, and that, that'll be sad. But uh, it was time to step aside, no question about that. I have things I want to do, and I, <laughs> I don't include doing any more basketball. you got a lot of things left, and we count ourselves lucky. We talk about this, and I say this about you all the time. It's not just the extraordinary broadcast you are, but the extraordinary person Thank that you. you are. But as I mentioned, Hall of Famer, um, not only were you inducted into the basketball Hall of Fame with the Kurt Gowdy Award, but you went in in the same class as a individual that you called many and many of his highlights in Paul Pierce. Yeah. What was that my favorite like Celtic. for you? He's been my favorite Celtic. He has. Uh, you know, when you don't travel with the team, which I didn't for maybe the first eight to ten years, and that was the Bird, Mikhail, Danny, Ainge that was that bunch. If you don't travel, you don't make friendships. If you travel, you're getting on and off buses with them. You're scraping snow off your car at three o'clock in the morning because you just landed. And you're on elevators with them. That's how you make friends. And Paul just right at the very beginning, he decided we'd be friends. And then he decided, he came up to me a couple times before a game and he said, I need to know what the officials are, what their names are before the game. I said, well, I'll take care of that. So when you go through the layup line, second time through, come over and give me a hug. And he'd come over and give me a hug, and I would go, John, Bill, Fred. He's the tall guy or something like that. And then Paul would take off and he'd go, Fred, how you doing? John, how you doing? Before the game, trying to get an edge, which I think he did. Um, but we kind of built on that relationship. And, uh, Every, if Paul came walking up the court right now, the first thing he'd say, look at me, he would say, Who's we, who we got tonight? <laughs> veteran. The veteran savvy of, of both of you. Uh, you mentioned that. You think about the, the individuals, the players, the stars that you call their games. Yeah. You go from Larry Bird to Paul Pierce mm -hmm. to now Jason Tatum. Yeah. What's the legacy for you? We see and hear your love and passion of the game. But what's the legacy that you want to leave here for these Boston Celtics fans? Um, people liked him. That would be nice. Uh, you know, I don't want to get too, too carried away with that, but, uh, yeah, people like them. Uh, I like to talk to fans. I don't, uh, Tommy used to sometimes kind of brush them off, and I would catch him as he blew them off and, and talk to them and give them something to put the, hang their hat on. But, um, yeah, I, again, I hate to be repetitive, but it all comes back to fans for me, um, getting to know people. A guy told me early on in the business, and I'm sure this is true for you, that if they love you, you'll make it. If they hate you, you'll make it. If they don't do who you are you're not going to get anywhere. So get out there and be who you are. And you get out there and talk to people. And I tell these guys that see coming out of ESPN now, um, they're machines. They, they have, it's got to be more of a personality that gets in it. It can't be just the way they are all the time. They don't want my criticism. I don't mean it's criticism. I mean it uh, to help Drew, the new kid who's come on, you know, to do the games when I go. Um, relax a little bit. Let people enjoy. You're going to be on the air for 80 nights a year. Uh, Tommy used to say, if we, somebody's going to invite me into their living room for three hours every night, i got to make them laugh at least three separate times and, and, and so that's what we're trying to do right now with scal uh, try to have a little fun with it but when people come up and want an autograph give it to them you know and give them a, more than that maybe talk to them for a second or two uh, if you do enough of that then after 30 years or so every city you go to you'll like a lot talk to you take selfies with you we, we know you see a lot of that um you mentioned him Tommy Heidenson, you you are a partner with him uh, extraordinarily for 39 years. Yeah. What, what was that like? Um, I don't think I could put it in words, really. He was like my big brother, like my uncle in a certain way. Um, we got along famously. We, 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 we would do this thing where we would go two or three months in the summertime, we wouldn't see each other at all or talk to each other. But as soon as we got together for the first media day, five minutes after I brought him his first bag of Dunkin' Donuts, he was happy for the rest of the day. Um, and he was just a great guy. He, he knew how to play the game. Uh, he knew how the game should be played. And he wasn't afraid to tell the coaches who didn't run, 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 which is all he ever said. Um, but he, Tommy used to say, you're not a running team unless you run off made free throws. 
Um, so if you can run up made free throws, you can run up and down the court. And that, that's what he was. So uh, he's, a, he's a terrible loss, but he lives every day here, not just because numbers up top. But there's a day goes by that I don't think of him in some category or another. Uh, he's a wonderful artist. <laughs> I'll tell you more about Winston Churchill than you never want to know. Um, he's, he's a very educated, smart man on top of being a great basketball player. Again, I could go on, but I won't. He's great. I miss him every day. You two together were, are, and, and you continue to be. Last thing for you, Mike, uh, this Boston Celtics team, high expectations for what they look like this yeah. season. Uh, what's your take on the ceiling that they could reach this year? I wish, I always wish we had a little more than we have. I do think they're, they're primed and ready to go here, and if they can stay healthy through the whole thing, I think they'll be there in the Final Four or so and have a shot at winning the whole thing. I would like to see them get a big who's tough. Um, we get we get, uh, Al Horford, who's a wonderful player, here, he's 37 years old. I hit corner threes for you, make good blocks for you every once in a while. But he's 37 years old. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be able to do that. After that, I won't say there's a drop off, but we we're, we're not big and tough. We we need to find a guy who can come in and pop some people. Um, I remember the first thing I ever saw Doc Rivers. He was going to the introductory press conference, and he was walking by me. He said, "What do we need?" And I said, "Toughness," uh, and that's all we used to talk about for the next 10 years that Doc was here. We always needed more toughness. So you never can have too much. We might, if we get one player who can be that guy, we'll go a long way. Well, Mike, we certainly appreciate all of your insight, all of your entertainment, and all of your kindness that uh, we've had through the years, and many, many more. So have a great broadcast tonight, and as always, thanks for your thanks, time. Thanks, I appreciate it.